choir come up, please. Everyone help us sing. to receive something from your word and we'll not fail to give you all the praise and honor and glory in your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Let's sing number 106. 106. <coughs>
Amen. Well, we want to welcome everyone again tonight to Tri-State Baptist Temple. And uh, we're just thankful already for what God has accomplished uh, today. And we're looking forward again uh, to tonight's service and then to Vacation Bible School this week. I want to ask everyone to continue to be praying for Vacation Bible School and for the children we'll have here this week. Uh, be praying for our teachers and all of our adult workers that will be here. That we'll just do our very best to present uh, the gospel to, to the ones we have here and the truths of God's word. That will be uh, the example that uh, we, we ought to be for them and that we'll see uh, the Lord work and we'll see uh, children saved this week. And we're excited about that and we're expecting uh, God to do something big. And so I hope uh, that you have that mindset and you're praying uh, for uh, the Lord's will uh, during this week of Vacation Bible School. If you'd like to help us by bringing cookies or Kool-Aid, you can just continue to bring those all throughout the week and just drop them off in the kitchen, and uh, they'll be put to use, and we'll use them all up this week as we have our refreshments with, our, uh, with the children each night uh, during Bible School. Also, uh, this Saturday, uh, we're going to have our next Family to Family Outreach Day. Uh, of course, we've had some they are just going on different days, but if you can come on this uh, scheduled day, it's going to be this Saturday uh, at eight, uh, 10 o'clock, and we'll just meet at the church and uh, talk for a moment, have a word of prayer, and then we'll go out and uh, continue to try to reach uh, these areas we have mapped off in, our, in South Point uh, to invite families to come to our church, and we just want to continue to work hard at that and uh, allow the Lord to bless in that as well, and so we're excited uh, about that, and we just want to encourage all of our families to participate in our family-to-family -family outreach. Um, also, tonight we'll have our regular uh, business meeting, so we'll just remind you about that, and then afterwards we'll have, uh, we will try to get some things set up for Vacation Bible School. We'll clear off the platform and uh, get it set up, and uh, we've had some classrooms that have already begun to be decorated, and uh, there'll be more of that going on, and so we're just going to be uh, working on that tonight to try to be uh, well prepared for tomorrow. We also... Uh, uh, if there's anybody who would be able to help us by driving a van uh, this week at Vacation Bible School, that would be a big help as well. So if there's anybody who uh, would like to volunteer to drive a van, uh, that would be a big help to us. So if you want to pray about that as well, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Well, at this time, we'll ask our men to come. We'll take up our tithes, offering, and our faith promise this evening. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Bailey. Good job. We appreciate that. It's good to see everyone this evening, and we're going to take up our children's change offering that we take up each Sunday night for church camp, and uh, just going to lay that aside and, and uh, get that uh, prepared for next year, and trust the Lord again just to give us another good year of camp, and uh, we're thankful for His goodness and His provision, and we do pray that you'll be uh, just in 
um, taking our Bible school to the Lord in prayer all through the week and just lifting that up before the Lord. It gives us a great opportunity just to uh, reach children and share the great message of God's Word and uh, build relationship with maybe some new children that come and we'll get them into Sunday school and church as well. And uh, we're thankful for the opportunity we'll have this week. But we need some young people to come up and help us. All the children will come that can and help us come up and take up the offering tonight and do a good job for us. Appreciate these boys and girls who are willing to step out and step up here and help out. That's a good thing, so we're thankful for them. They're going to come right on up here and get ready to pray and help us take up that offering, all right? All right, well, let's pray together. Father, we are thankful for how good you are to us. We thank you for the love that you demonstrated for us when you took our place on the cross. And Lord, thank you, Father, for our camp that we had this year. And Lord, just a great week that you allowed us to have. And Lord, we're, uh, we're going to plan uh, prayerfully for the future while we wait for the return of the Lord Jesus. And Lord, we want to lay aside and be ready. And so, Lord, we're thinking about that. And Lord, we're just thanking you for providing. And Lord, just bless the offering tonight. Uh, multiply it. Use it, Lord, for your glory. And we thank you for it. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you have some offering, just hold your hand up. These boys and girls will come by and they'll pick it up. appreciate the help of our boys and girls taking up that offering and uh, we look forward already to camp for next year uh, and put that to good use so we're excited about that well before our pastor comes today we're going to have a special uh, so miss bailey and miss Liddy are going to sing a song for us
Thank you, ladies. We know the, that God said He loved us when He sent His Son to the cross for Amen. us. And we're thankful tonight for His love for our life and what He's done for us. Good to see you tonight. We're excited about Bible school getting ready to start. And we want to uh, not keep you too long so that we can uh, allow some folks some time tonight before it's too late to do some work, get ready for tomorrow. But before we preach, just want to give you a, a word of praise and request some prayer. I'm thankful today. God gave us a good morning, and uh, this morning, right after this morning service, uh, Brother Don Harris' grandson, Drake, got saved and came to me after the service and said, Pat, came right back to the door and said, Pastor, I need to know how to be saved. And uh, he was ready, and so we're thankful for that. God just worked in his heart, had him here in the services today, and he's been in Children's Church, and, and he's been hearing the Word of God, and God just brought him to a place. He's 11 years old, same age I was when I was saved, so that was a good thing, and we're thankful for that, so pray for him and his family. And then just a, uh, just a request of prayer, uh, we hope you'll pray for Brother Ken Howe. Uh, Ken is still really struggling to come to grips with what ha has happened there with Martha, and uh, you know it's difficult for him, and uh, he's also just not feeling well. He uh, he's battling uh, high sugar levels in his body, and uh, his blood pressure is real high too. And uh, so he called tonight, said, "I'm just don't feel like I should get out. I'm going to rest." But uh, pray for me. So I hope you'll pray for him. Just remember him in prayer. Uh, he's not eating right, not taking care of himself in that way like he knows he ought to. And uh, so just pray for him and remember him in prayer. He's really wanting to uh, take a trip with uh, uh, Steve Cook over to Israel later on in the year. And I, I'm just praying, Lord, will enable him to do that, allow him to be able to go and be a part of that. I, he feels like it would be something that would be really helpful to him. So uh, I'm praying the Lord will bless him and help him to get that, uh, get the finances and things he needs in order to be able to do that. So pray for him and we're uh, thinking about him. Well, tonight, let's take our Bibles, open them back one more time to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And I just want to conclude here uh, a thought that we've had that we've looked at over the past uh, few services. And uh, we've been looking at being faithful. And uh, here in 1 Corinthians 4, we find these wonderful words in this scripture that we've used as a beginning point as we've been looking at this. 1 Corinthians 4, Paul's writing by uh, the Holy Spirit to the church in Corinth, and he says to them in 1 Corinthians 4, 1, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful, but with me it's a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. And we'll stop right there. But I want you to consider with me tonight being faithful to go after lost souls. Being faithful to go after lost souls. Let's pray together tonight. Father, we are thankful for allowing us to be here this evening. And God, as we look toward Bible school this week, we look toward, Lord, a great week. We're praying and asking Heavenly Father for you just to enable and strengthen those that are working and laboring and teaching. Uh, God, help us, God, to have our heart and life in a good position, Lord, right with you that will be usable to you. Lord, we're praying your word would just not return void, but God, it'll, it'll be good seed sown into good ground. It'll bring forth fruits of repentance and salvation. And Lord, we're asking tonight that the hearts of these children, Lord, just might be uh, the key to unlocking the door to the hearts of their parents. 
us. And so, Father, we're looking to a great week. Provide what we need and just bless and meet the needs that will be there. Lord, thank you for a great day. We praise you, Father, for being at work and speaking to hearts and for your Holy Spirit moving and working in hearts and lives. Lord, we thank you for that. And, Lord, we just uh, ask tonight now, God, once again... God, you do the work that only you can. We know, as we said this morning, Father, that your word will help us if we'll heed it. And Lord, it'll convict us where we're contrary to it. And so, Lord, we're praying that we'll be obedient. And Father, we'll just look to you and learn, Lord, and be equipped to serve you. Or we're praying tonight that you would, Lord, speak to someone tonight who might be blinded. Lord, help them to see the light of the truth of the gospel. To someone tonight, Lord, that might be in darkness, help them, Lord, and lead them into that light. And Lord, if they're bound tonight by sin, Satan, or their own self, we pray that, Lord, you'll set them free. And that, Lord, they'll be at liberty to live for you and serve you. So we just ask tonight now you'd have your way. Someone comes to church tonight but not saved, we pray today would be that day. And we give you thanks and praise for what you'll do in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just take a moment and just review some of the things we've looked at from 1 Corinthians 4. We see here in 1 Corinthians 4, first of all, the roles that God has for everyone who's ever been saved to fulfill. He speaks about it in verse 1 that we are ministers or servants and stewards of the mysteries of God. If you're saved today by the grace of God, you have the privilege of serving the King of Kings. You'll not have any greater privileges in this world. Uh, you'll never give your life to anything that will be more pleasing to God or profitable to you than to submit your life to the Lord and live every day to serve Him putting His will at the foremost place in your life. If you're here and you're a Christian, and you're not willfully and purposely living to serve the Lord, you are either serving the world, the flesh, or the devil. Everybody is serving something. Everybody's serving someone. You might think you're taking a neutral ground and that you're not involved in this thing, but Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're against me. If you're not gather, uh, uh, gathering with me, you're scattering. And there's no neutral ground with the Lord. We either make a choice to serve and live for Him, or we're serving ourselves, or the world, or the devil. Uh, if uh, everyone who is uh, serving someone, uh, if you're saved, you ought to serve your Savior. In 1 Corinthians 4, we also saw the requirements that God has placed upon every child of God. We're to be servants. We have that privilege. We are stewards. We have that responsibility. And of us, God requires that we be faithful to Him. You know, uh, we know that God has given us in this world some things that He has placed us as overseers of. We like to say it this way sometimes. He's given us all of our time upon this earth, however long that time is. He's given us talents that He created us with, certain things that uh, we can do uh, maybe uh, more effectively than others. And He's given us the treasure of the world, that is, earthly possessions or properties and God is directly responsible for any prosperity that you've ever had. He's given us all those things. And as a steward, you're to oversee the use of those and the investing of those things as your Savior would guide and lead you to use them to further His work in the world. That's what we looked at this morning. We need to be faithful uh, to uh, support and to give for the work and furtherance of the Lord's work. God requires that every child of God be both faithful servants and stewards. And if we're to be faithful servants and stewards, we must be faithful to go to church and attend its activities and ministries. That's what we looked at a couple weeks ago. It begins there. To be a faithful servant and a steward of God, every child of God should be faithful to give to further the work of the Lord. And if we're not consulting the Lord Jesus about how we use our time, our talents, and treasures, then we're in rebellion against Him. And God says in Malachi 3.8, we're robbing from Him. Uh, we must learn, as we looked at this morning, the lesson of being content with what we have. The lesson of contribution, as the church at Philippi learned, to give once and again uh, to support the work of the Lord. Uh, we must live in this world like there's an eternity that's real, where there's a heaven and a hell, and souls are going to exist 
but there'll be nothing else of this world that will exist there. That's how we have to live our lives. Every one of God's people we saw must learn that the Lord has commanded His people to tithe. We said it's thankfully simple, 10%, a dime on the dollar, 10 on 100, uh, right on down the line. Simple math. God's commanded us to do it. We, uh, we uh, don't even have to pray about whether He would have us do it or not. Someday we will learn that we have only cheated ourselves by not investing in and laying up treasure in heaven. And God's people must be faithful to give to further the Lord's work. But this evening, I want you to notice with me, if you will, that we want to see that those that know the Lord must also be faithful to go after lost souls. If we're to be faithful servants and stewards, we must go after lost souls. If you'll turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, let me read two verses for you there. Ephesians chapter 6, and beginning in the 18th verse, the Bible says, "...praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit." And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly, and you ought to mark that phrase, as I ought to speak as I ought to speak. Now, here the Bible speaks about the mystery of the gospel. You know, God has made each child of God a steward of the mysteries of God. For a child of God, the mysteries of God are now something we know and have an answer for that when we were lost, we neither understood or had the answer for. Uh, a lost world does not know uh, how God wants uh, to save them and how He's done everything necessary that they can be redeemed. But God's people today more than ever need to be faithful in gathering together as God's people. Uh, we need to be faithful in giving. Uh, we need to uh, invest in the things the Lord uh, has going on in the world. We must be faithful in going after souls that Jesus came into the world uh, and gave His life uh, and paid the sin debt to save rose again from the grave and lives today to be their Savior. I want to give you, first of all, a look at a request that's made. Here, Paul's uh, making a request, and he's asking the people here in the church in Ephesus uh, to, uh, to pray. He says to pray uh, here with all supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. And then he makes a prayer request in verse 19. And then for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, uh, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul's making a prayer request. You know, it would be good for us all to study the prayers of Paul and to see what this godly man was led of the Holy Spirit to ask God to do for him. Here he's asking God's people to pray with him and to ask God on his behalf that God would use him to reach the lost. That's what he's asking. Please pray for me, that utterance will be given to me, that I'll open my mouth boldly and that I'll speak as I ought to speak. Paul's asking that the church pray for him. Paul's saying, I, I know I once was lost, I'm now saved. I have the answer and I know how others can be saved. Pray that God would use me and that I can reach the lost. Uh, Friday night we were preparing to go out and go visiting and I just shared with a group that was ready to go and I appreciate the good work that they did getting out and knocking on almost 300 doors and passing out some literature and speaking to people about Vacation Bible School and I was speaking to them and as we got ready to go I, I said uh, you know one of the things that, uh, that is, a, is a great burden is that you know we don't have more people out ready to go and do what we were going to go and do. And I said, honestly, those of us that are here tonight, this is probably something we'd rather do something else. We'd probably rather go and do something else. It's difficult, isn't it? It's, go, it's difficult to go and uh, to speak to people about the Lord, to invite them to church or to Sunday school. It's a hard, difficult thing. 
You know, one of the things that the Lord has just, uh, just burdened my heart for is on the mission trip. We, we went and, and uh, we, we were zealous and we were looking forward to going out and sharing the gospel with everybody that we could as often as we could. You know, uh, that's good. That's a great thing. But you know, the thing that bothers me is what has happened to all of us when it comes to doing the same thing in our own community, in our own neighborhood. Where's our zeal to reach the lost? Where's our burden? Where's the desire? Where's the anticipation? Where's the excitement about going out with the great message of the good news of the gospel to people all around our community that are lost without the Lord Jesus Christ? In Romans chapter number 9, uh, Paul's uh, here uh, making uh, a statement in verse 1 of Romans 9. He says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul says, I have a burden for the people that are just like me. I have a burden for my kindred, those of the nation of Israel. Those that are around me, I have a burden for them. A burden so great that God, if I could be accursed and forever cast away from you, I would if it would save my people. If it would bring them to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, I'd be willing to do that. Let me ask you the question, when's the last time we have that kind of a burden? When's the last time we had any care and concern in any way uh, in relationship to that for the lost? In chapter 10, verse 1, he said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. You know, and all around us in our communities and all around us uh, here in the, uh, the neighborhoods that we live in, there are people who need the Lord Jesus Christ. They're unsaved. They're lost without Him. They're waiting for someone to share Him with them. And may the Lord help us uh, to pray that God would give us a zeal, a burden, a desire to go and reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have our... Family to family outreach coming up Saturday morning. I encourage you to come. You say, Pastor, there's still, is there still any way I can get in on that? Yeah, there's still a way. We have 10 sections of our community. And when we had our sign up day, we had about three or four of those sections where somebody said, I'm willing to go, I'm willing to work. And there's over half of them still tonight without a name. No one says, I'll step up. I'm willing to go and work in that area. I'll go and knock on those doors. I'll go and pass out that gospel booklet. We have a great need tonight. We need to be faithful to go after lost souls. That was what it was at the heart of the church, this church, when it was, when it was established, when it was settled in this community, that it might be a, a, an outreach to go out and reach the lost and win the lost. And it did person by person, family by family, soul by soul. And the Lord did a great work in our church uh, as it uh, was a great impact in this community. But tonight, uh, again, we need to pray and ask God, God, would you give our hearts a burden for souls? Would you make us zealous to reach the lost right here in South Point, Ohio? And it's only going to happen by prayer. We must pray. A request. Let me show you a second thing, a responsibility. You don't have to answer this question out loud, but how many of you know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior? If you're saved, you have the answer for a lost and a dying world. You have the answer. You have understood that you were a sinner. You know that sin demanded that a sin debt be paid on your behalf. You realized that you needed to be saved from sin or someday sin would end your life in this world and the sin that already condemns you would send your soul to hell for eternity. You understood that. You knew that truth. You who are saved tonight understand that salvation is by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've understood that it doesn't have anything to do with you or what you've done or who you are. 
Uh, it has everything to do with the Lord Jesus Christ and who He is and what He's done for you. It is, in fact, Jesus alone, the virgin-born Son of God, what He did, how He took your sins to the cross, how He died in your place and was buried and rose again, how He alone is satisfying to God on behalf of our sin debt. You have known that through repentance and faith, you have placed your faith and trust in a Savior who lives in your heart and life and has saved you and made you safe and secure in Him. You now possess what the majority of the people alive on planet earth do not possess. You possess the knowledge and the understanding of what it means to be saved. Half the world have never heard the gospel. The other half are confused and seeking and searching for some real answers and hope. And uh, tonight, if you know Christ as your Savior, uh, you have the answer for the multitudes of people in the world and the many that are in our community that, neither are, that either are not saved and do not understand what it means to be saved. To most people tonight, it's a mystery that a man can't simply live his life, do his best, and be accepted of God. It's a mystery why that's not possible, but many people believe that. It's a mystery tonight that, uh, that just going to church and being religious and sincere will not save them, but many people think that. It's a mystery to so many people tonight that being baptized as a baby won't get the job done or, or taking a trip through the baptistry as an, as an adult will not wash away their sins or satisfy God on their behalf. That's a mystery to them. They don't understand. They need the answers. In Psalm 126, in the sixth verse, there the Bible uh, says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. In Matthew chapter number 4, the Bible says in the 18th verse, And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. You know, tonight you may be saved and going to heaven without fishing for men. But I tell you what, you're not following the Lord in this world right. if you're not fishing for men. Right. Pretty clear, isn't it? Follow me. And if we follow him, what will he do? He'll make us fishers of men. And if we're not following him, then we're not going to be fishing. And if we're not fishing, we're not following him. May the Lord help us to get our eyes on the Lord and where he's led follow and what he's done. May we, may we also uh, do what he has done. It's time we laid down... Uh, the things that have occupied our hands and life and time and pick up the nets that He's given and, and cast them as He directs us and go after the souls of men. Yes. It's time we saw that the fields are full and white to harvest and we very possibly may enter heaven empty-handed with no sheaves of souls to bring into the eternal haven that God has for souls. Matthew, or in Luke chapter 14, in the 23rd verse, Luke 14, verse number 23, the Bible said, The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. That's the clear command of the Lord. If we're going to be faithful and good stewards, we must be obedient. And we must go and we must compel the lost to come to Christ. In John 17, that's the great prayer of our Savior. He says in the 18th verse as he prays unto the Father, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. The word sent, the word sent is used 123 times in your King James New Testament. 123 times. It's a word that is a directive word. You know, here the Lord Jesus is saying, I was under orders to come, and I've come. And I'm going to the cross like you directed me to go. And just as you've commanded me to come and to go, I'm now putting them, my people, under the same orders. Yes. They're to go 
with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's hard. You know, there's nothing easy about going after souls. But it is a choice that we have to make. We must rely upon the Holy Spirit and we must make it a continual matter of prayer. And it is a responsibility that we have been given. It's a matter in which our Savior and the Lord Jesus demands that we be faithful. You know, ours is not to worry about the fruit. Ours is not to worry about, uh, about uh, the harvest, but we're to sow the seed and fish for men and leave the results in the hands of the Lord. But we must be faithful. Someday we'll meet the Lord and give an account for our faithfulness in the areas that we've looked at, our faithfulness to God's house and its ministries, our faithfulness to give to further the work of the Lord for going after lost souls. And I'm thankful tonight, there's a third thing I just want to leave you with, a reward. Paul makes a request, God, touch my heart, give me a burden to reach the lost. We find a responsibility that's been given here. Jesus said, as you sent me, so I have sent them. We have a responsibility. But I want you to think about a reward. In 1 Corinthians, back in chapter 4, we've read verses 1 through 4 several times, but I hope you'll look at verse 5. The Bible says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, then shall every man have praise of God. Here God speaking about His rewards at a coming day. You know, there's coming an examination day for every child of God. An examination day. 2 Corinthians 5 and, uh, and chapter 5 and verse number 10, He says there, uh, We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. There's an examination day coming. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11, the Bible says, For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. May the Lord tonight help us to live every day with the reality that we're going to stand before the Lord Jesus. His eyes are as a flaming fire. His word will try our works to see if they were of heavenly treasure or of earthly trash. There's an examination day coming. And part of that is going to be our faithfulness to reach lost souls. And then there's an exaltation day coming for some. The rewards and the crowns the Bible speaks about that are given at the judgment seat of Christ for those who faithfully serve the Lord, they are based upon faithfulness. They're based upon faithfulness. And there it's possible to have the commendation, well done, heard. Wouldn't that be something? Stand before the Lord Jesus and to have Him we'll examine our lives and in some way, in some regard to some thing, to hear our Savior say, well done. Eat. Well done. Eat. Well done. There's an exaltation day for some. A commendation will be given, well done. And then there'll be a celebration. I'm thankful that he says, enter into the joy of the Lord. Eat. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You know, there's nothing that brought greater joy to Jesus than being obedient to the Father. The same souls come to Him. And it's going to, be, it's going to be a much more joyful place for us to know that God used our lives in some way, even some small degree, to know that there's somebody in eternity that's there because we were obedient and faithful to try to go after lost souls. And we need to be faithful in the matter of going after the lost. Let's pray together tonight. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. And we're going to stand and sing together in just a moment. And the invitation is the time when we just invite people to be obedient to the Lord. God's Word very clearly shows us that to be faithful, we have to be faithful in the matter of the local church. He tells us in Ephesians 5 that there's a mystery of the church and Christ, that they have a union, a relationship that's illustrated by the relationship of a husband and a wife in a godly marriage. When you said, I do, and she said, I do, you didn't say, 
You didn't, you didn't expect her just to simply be faithful every now and then. You expected her to be faithful all the time, and she did you. And when we became a part of the bride of Christ, the church, His body in this world, He expects us to be faithful to Him. We'll give an account for our faithfulness to the church, to its activities and events. It's at the church we're fed. It's at the church we're fired up to serve Him. It's at the church that we, that we are the kind of, made the kind of people that we need to be to live for the Lord. We'll give an account for our faithfulness in giving to further the Lord's work. And we'll give an account for going after lost souls. I'm praying tonight the Lord give back a burden for souls to my heart and life. People right here in our community. And I'm praying He give our church a heart for lost souls. That each one of us would be used of the Lord every day to be soul conscious and reaching souls every day for the glory of God. You may be here tonight. You've come to church. You've never received Christ as your personal Savior. We want to invite you tonight to step out of your seat and come. Somebody will stand right here and meet you and take the Bible and show you how you can be saved. You might like to meet someone after the church service is over and say, I'd like to see from the Bible how I can trust Christ and be saved. If whatever the need is in your heart and life, I wouldn't want to leave here tonight unless I said yes to Jesus. You'll never regret that. There are a lot of people in eternity tonight who will think back to a night like tonight and they'll say, I wish I would have only been obedient. Heavenly Father, we pray tonight, God, we would be obedient people. I pray that our prayer life would be saturated with a request, Lord, Lord, give me a heart for the souls of our people, those in our communities and neighborhoods, our families. Lord, may we live every day with that divine purpose to faithfully live to reach them. Lord, we just ask tonight now that you would just have your way in this invitation. Some may need to come tonight, Lord, and just come and just uh, with that uh, bit of public accountability say, Lord, I, I want you to do a work in my heart. Set my heart, Lord, a fire for souls. Well, we pray that God will just, uh, Lord, uh, live every day in light of eternity. And Lord, tonight, you just do your work in our life. We ask all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and we'll take a hymn book. 296. We're going to turn to hymn 296. And we're going to sing the first verse of that song. And uh, we hope that the Lord spoken to your heart. You'll come. And uh, ask God to just do a work in your heart as we sing on that very first verse. <clears throat> Second verse. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and meet not His mercies, mercies for you and for me?
let's sing the third verse. Time is now fleeting, the moments are passing, passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering, deathbeds are coming, coming for you and for me. Come home, come home, you are weary, come home, earnestly is calling, calling all sinner, come Amen. I appreciate God's word and that message. And uh, I was just thinking as we, he was preaching, if, if I live my life and I'm not faithful to go out and to reach souls, what have I accomplished at all in my life? What was the meaning or purpose of my life at all if I, if I never have done that, and so um, I appreciate God's word, and I appreciate uh, that message, and I just pray the Lord will use it in our hearts so that we would be a church that has a burden for souls, and that we would do all that we can to go out and to reach people and just to see the Lord work amongst us, so I really appreciate that message. I want to remind our Vacation Bible School workers, if you needed a schedule or a staff sheet that you didn't see where you were at and you didn't get one, uh, there's still a couple up here. If you'd like to grab one of those, you can, uh, just to remind you of the schedule and uh, where you need to be, that they're up here, and if you have any other questions, just uh, ask, and we'll try to help you however we can. Uh, but we're going to finish up here tonight with a word of prayer, and then we'll have our uh, business meeting in just a, just a moment. So, Brother Jordan, can I pray? Amen.